Greetings, my fellow gamers. This is I, Wraith King, and welcome to AFK Arena. Today, we will be taking a very close look at this fantastic game. But before I begin, I hope you like my background. I really, really like this one, and I think I'm going to use this a little more often when I make videos like this. I made one before, but I think this one's a lot better. I'm going to make this as short and simple as possible so my horrible attention span doesn't get distracted. Let me just start off and say that this is the greatest shard game I have ever played. There are few shard games I actually like, as you folks know. I find myself constantly leaving negative reviews every time a shard game is released. And negative reviews for these types of games are definitely common. However, this game is definitely very different compared to the rest. Actually, I was considering leaving it completely out of the same category as other shard games because heroes are not obtained mainly with shards. Which leads me into my favorite aspect of this game. And that is the way heroes are obtained. Every time I play a shard game like this, I always go to the character list and set a favorite and focus on farming for that particular character and leveling them up once I get them. But what made it so difficult is that sometimes my favorite character might be a legendary character or a hero from a rare faction. And in most shard games, these heroes are usually locked behind a VIP wall or my least favorite thing in gaming history, RNG. Wait, is it raining out? Hey, it is raining out. However, AFK Arena seems to handle the hero system pretty well. Instead of just giving us random junk from packs, you get a straight up hero. Which means no more grinding for hours for pretty much nothing. But let's say you find yourself a hero you're not entirely happy with. Well, they have this system called the Rickety Cart. Here you can trade in all the stupid heroes you don't want for essence and these purple coins. Save up 18,000 of these, baby, and you can get your fine self 80 elite hero stones. Which gives you a guaranteed elite hero. Elite heroes are very, very good, by the way. Very good. But let's go on to the gameplay. What makes it interesting? Should you play it? Is it fun? Well, there is a lot to the gameplay, but I'm going to try my best to keep it simple so my horrible attention span doesn't get distracted by water droplets again. After years of playing horrible, horrible shard games, I can easily say that this is the best I've played. Not only is it fun to play, but it has something to it that most shard games just seem to ignore these days, and that's giving their massive character list some lore. But before I go too far into the lore, because I guarantee you I will get distracted by that, let's talk a little bit more about the gameplay. What you're seeing here is the arena. As you may know, I really, really like arena combat in a lot of different games, particularly RPG games. They seem to get the arena pretty well in almost every RPG game I've played. And this game, wow, they really went to town on it on this one. It's pretty difficult. And I like a good challenge, if you guys may or may not know. And this definitely is a challenge. You are affected by every player that plays against your team. That's right. Everybody who attacks you while you're off, off the game definitely can affect your rank. So it's a real grind if you want to get to the top. And me personally, I really like that. No, it's not for everybody, but I like a competition. And that's something this game definitely brings to the table. There are a few characters that are pretty overpowered, but not too much to the point where they completely break the game. With a little thought and strategy, you should be able to beat the game regardless of how powerful a hero might be on the enemy team. But the arena is not the only game mode. My favorite game mode in this game 
is the Arcane Labyrinth. This is a very interesting game mode. I have not seen this in any other shard games. I've seen similar things. Some of them are called expeditions, exploration, etc, etc. They're usually called something like that. But in this one, it's a lot more complicated. You do get rewards after you beat every fight, but these rewards are only meant for the Arcane Labyrinth. Now, I'm going to beat this, this uh, team right here and show you guys what I mean. Set up my team here. Make sure they're positioned right. All right. This should be pretty easy, though. They're only level 70s. Put it on times two so I can speed up the battle a little bit. That guy's really strong. That lion guy, he is crazy. If you get him, you're lucky. Level him up. He's really strong. But all right. This is what I'm talking about right here. These are the items I'm referring to. All of these items affect your heroes in a very unique way. Some of them affect their abilities and make them even more powerful. Sometimes they affect certain hero stat lines. As a good example would be the Beast's Claw up here. It increases the damage of my agility based heroes by 20%, but since I do not have too many agility heroes, that won't affect me very much at all. The next item on the list here is called Carnal Desire. What this does is it increases all teammates' life leech by 8 points for every mauler hero that is on your team. I do not use mauler heroes very much, and I don't have any on my team currently, so this would be very useless to me in my run. Although it is a legendary item, probably not the best idea to pick it. The next item is called Lament. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. At the beginning of a battle, Grizz Hall is able to use his reanimate ability without using any energy. That sounds really powerful, but unfortunately I do not own Grizz Hall. So that item and the other item, the legendary one, are pretty useless to me. I do have one agility based hero on the team right now, so it looks like I'm going to have to get the Beast's Claw. Sometimes you'll run into items that don't really work with your team all that well, but there is always an option that will support you in a very interesting way. And it seems like the only item that's really going to help me right now is the Beast's Claw. So we're going to go ahead and pick that. So yes, I do not have too many agility-based heroes besides one on my team, but that's all right. I'll find one eventually. Why? You're probably thinking, Wraith King, you, you don't have many agility-based heroes. How are you going to get one? Well, they have something in the Arcane Labyrinth called an Abandoned Wagon. Not really all that abandoned, really, because there are four heroes in this wagon that will support you, but you can only pick one of them to come with you. And lucky me, one of the strongest characters in the game, who happens to be an agility-based hero, is sitting in that wagon getting ready to help me out. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pick her <laughs> and add her on my team. Well, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. So, yeah, I got her. She's an agility-based hero, so her damage is increased by 20%. So, that item synergizes very, very well with her. But it doesn't end there. There are so many different items, so many different techniques that allow you to win. My favorite technique here is a little bit of a word of advice for you if you want to grind in the Arcane Labyrinth is look for Lifesteal, Life Leech in this game, and Critical Rate. You want to find things that increase your Critical Rate and Lifesteal. That paired with some very high DPS heroes, mainly agility based, you will be able to melt through even the strongest of enemies in the Labyrinth. But let's talk a little bit more about that lore. And I can safely say that this game has a lot of it. Like a lot. Every character in this game has their own interesting story, and that is definitely uncommon for this genre. And that's not the only thing that's different about this game, but the game modes are very unique, bringing new mechanics that definitely make it stand out compared to other mobile games. So I can definitely understand why it's so popular. And this was just released a little while ago, so they're bound 
to make more to this game in the future. And recently they have added a new character who is probably my most favorite character in the game right now. I mean, look at this guy. He, he's just awesome. He's floating and he has flame for legs. Man, this guy's just awesome. There I go, getting distracted again. As I was saying, um, wait, what, what, what was I saying again? Maybe I should have my script with me when I'm making these reviews. I don't know. Anyway, this game is constantly impressing me, and I've only been playing this game for a few weeks now. With as many different game modes, there's always something to do every day, and there's always a reason to keep playing. It's one of those games you're definitely going to find a lot of enjoyment out of. But alright, alright, alright. I think I've given this game an appraise, but let's talk about the negatives. What about them? This is the section that devs really like to listen to because it points out the flaws so they can fix the flaws and make the game flawless. I said flaw way too many times in that sentence. Now me personally, I have not experienced any trouble. However, a friend of mine has been experiencing a few problems involving the game crashing and sending him back to his home screen. Now this is the first time I've ever heard of this issue. I'm not sure if anyone else is experiencing this, but it's definitely good to let the devs know that it has happened. Now here is one negative thing that I do have to say about this game. The lack of actually picking the hero I want to get. There is a lot of RNG around finding heroes, which means you'll find every last hero in this game completely randomly. There are a few ways you can buy heroes outright from playing in the labyrinth, however there are only a few heroes available in the shop every once in a very long time. You can refresh the shop however for 1000 gems, but you cannot change what heroes actually appear. But when you head over to the tavern, you'll notice that after you've drawn 100 heroes, you'll be able to select a faction, and you will be able to get heroes from the selected faction. But again, you will not have any control over what hero you actually get from the chosen faction. So there is no real way to grind for a particular hero. And as you guys know, that's something I definitely can't stand in shard games. So that is my only negative I have for this game, but aside from that, I don't have any other complaints. But hopefully the developers do add multiple ways to get certain heroes, particularly my favorite guy right here. I really, really want to get a hold of this guy. But overall, this is a really fun game. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm still playing it as you're watching this video. It's a great game. Just the thing is, my one negative is a pretty big negative. I don't like the fact that I can't grind for particular heroes. I just never really liked having to rely on RNG to get a favorite character of mine. I actually have a history with that. There was this one game, I will not say its name, where there was a character I just could never get. And it was a year, a year. I was looking for that character a full year, could not find them. And in, into the next year, the game shut down. So yeah, that wasn't a very good experience. Uh, the game wasn't that good. And it was, not only did it have problems with RNG, but it had a lot of problems with greed. And I think the developers they kind of got what was coming to them for that shutdown. Their player base was starting to leave. Everybody was just bombing the game with bad comments. It was just a nightmare. But it was, it had a really, really great, great premise to the game. Like the atmosphere, the artwork, it was just a beautiful game. I really liked that game. It was just the fact that it was so dang greedy. And eventually it caught up with the developers. I really do not want that to happen for this game because it has a very similar premise to the, uh, you know, the way the characters are. 
it's just everything about it is really really pretty the artwork it, it's very similar to that game actually but better in a lot of ways because i have been able to get quite a few of the characters that i actually like as you guys might notice i do have a lot of graveborn heroes this guy right here is my favorite graveborn hero who i've been actually pretty lucky to get at all i'm really lucky to have him uh so yeah that's great but there might be some people who do not have the characters they want and a lot of the characters they they want they probably don't have so hopefully the devs do add more ways to get particular characters instead of random ones i would really appreciate that but anyways that is all the time i have left for this video my fellow gamers this is a really really good game i am enjoying the time that i have had on this game and i'm pretty sure you guys are going to enjoy it too i'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check it out but in the meantime my fellow gamers take it easy for me remember to leave a like comment and subscribe to this channel so you can be a part of the dark kingdom in the meantime take it easy for me all right bye